Hello, welcome to another radio and television station, and I'm Country. Here comes local news. Yesterday in Hanoi, the Central Vietnam Learning Promotion Association celebrated the 15th anniversary of Learning Promotion Day and launched the competition. Every citizen's self-learning and lifelong learning meet the requirements of sustainable development in the digital transformation period and responded to the Lifelong Learning Week. Over the past 15 years, the Vietnam Learning Promotion Organization has covered communes, wards, villages, and hamlets with more than 26 million members. The lifelong learning movement, the social model of learning in families and community is growing. The Study Promotion Fund has awarded millions of courses to poor students overcoming difficulties. Speaking at summary, Deputy Prime Minister Trần Hồng Hà praised and sincerely thanked the leaders of the association and all members. At the same time, the deputy prime minister also outside that in the common time, the party, state, and ministry will accompany the association to promote the lifelong learning movement in the context of digital transformation. Vietnam's economy continues to show signs of improvement. Newly released data from the General Statistics Office show that Vietnam's GDP in the third quarter increased by 5.33% over the same period last year. Overall, GDP in the first nine months of 2023 will increase by 4.24% over the same period last year, higher than the growth rate of 2.19% and 1.37% over the same period in 2022 and 2021. Regarding economic structure in the first nine months of 2023, the agriculture, forestry, and fishery sector account for 11.51%. The industrial and construction sector account for 37.16%. Service sector accounts for 42.72%. Taxes less subsidized on products accounts for 8.61%. Regarding industrial production, the added value of the whole industry in the first nine months was estimated to increase by 1.65% over the same period last year. The Nga Provincial People's Committee had just issued Plan Number 231 on enhancing electricity saving in the province for a period 2023-2025 and the following years. Accordingly, the province sets a target by 2025 that each year at least 2.1% of the province's total electricity consumption will be saved, reduce power of losses to less than 3%, use 100% LED street lights, strive to have 30% of office buildings and 50% of residential homes use self produce and self consume rooftop solar power by 2030. In the current context, Economical and efficient use of electricity is an important and urgent solution to maintain energy security and ensure sustainable development. Yesterday, Russia celebrated the first anniversary of annexation for a region of Donetsk, Luhansk, Kherson, and Zaporizhia. Russian President Vladimir Putin said residents of Russian-controlled areas of Ukraine wish to continue joining Russia as they did a year ago. Speaking in the video, Putin said, Just like one year ago in historic referendums, people once again express and affirm their will to the Russian people, who by political labor and action deserve to earn the trust of the people. On September 30th, 2022, Parts of four regions of Ukraine, Donetsk, Luhansk, Kherson, and Zaporizhia were formally annexed by Russia. Following referendums, Western countries have rejected this annexation. Yesterday, the U.S. condor Serbia to withdraw its forces from the border with Kosovo after discovering what they call an unprecedented military buildup by Serbia. According to the White House, Serbia deployed tanks and artillery at the border after a clash broke out at monastery in northern Kosovo last week, leaving one Kosovo policeman and three Serb gunmen dead. Speaking to reporters, White House National Security Council spokesman John Kirby told reporters, We are monitoring Serbia's large-scale military deployment along the border with Kosovo that includes an unprecedented staging of advanced Serbian artillery tanks mechanized infantry units. We believe that this is a very destabilizing development. We are calling on Serbia to withdraw those forces from the border. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken telephoned Serbian President 
Alexander Vucic to urge this accolation and a return to our dialogue. That's all for today. Thank you for watching and bye for now.